Tonight, family affair Noemi outfoxes her rivals to join her sister Jess as an Olympic gold medalist. Aussie surfer Jack Robinson grabs silver in an epic day in Tahiti. Also tonight, interest rates still on hold, but the Reserve Bank boss can't rule out another hike. A hunter's doctor's final act of bravery, saving his wife before being taken by a crocodile. And a man rescued from the roof of his car as floodwater swamps Tamworth. This is Indian News with Gavin Morris and Natasha Bairstorff. Good evening, Australia's Noemi Fox is now an Olympic gold medalist. After dominating one of the game's most chaotic and unpredictable events, the kayak cross. It completes a fox fairy tale in Paris, with Noemi following in the paddle strokes of her sister Jess, the pair becoming the first Aussie siblings to win individual gold. Going on as a proud sister. Now she's created her own opportunity, and it's her time to shine. You and your sister are ahead of Brazil, Sweden, <laughs> Spain, and 186 other countries on the gold medal tally list. Wow. <laughs> Slalom supremacy for these sisters. There surely is something in the water at the Foxes. In Paris, Edward Godfrey, NBN News. After three days, the swell picked up in Tahiti, and for Jack Robinson, it was well worth the wait. The Aussie surfer found himself in a gold medal showdown with a local hero after beating a three-time world champion. Absolutely everything, and leaves Tahiti with a silver medal. Australia's Curtis Marshall missed out on a medal in the men's pole vault after bravely battling back from injury. The final will go down in Olympic history with the Swedish world record holder Amon Duplantis soaring to new heights. Badly dislocated his ankle in April. There were doubts as to whether he would even make it to Paris. Relief, a bit of happiness. Next to me. No. Matt Wern is set to sail for his... The International Boxing Association has fronted a chaotic media conference to shed light on why two female boxers competing in Paris were banned from the 2023 World Championships. The organisation confirmed that Algeria's Imani Khalif and Taiwan's Lin Yuting failed gender eligibility tests because of the presence of certain chromosomes. How is not this dangerous? Is an unfair advantage, Khalif says the best way for her to respond to the controversy is to win gold. Saya Sakakibara has done what no Aussie athlete has so far in Paris, with the BMX freestyle gold medalist presented to adoring fans at Champions Park. So let's take a look at the medal tally as it stands, and the US and China are on top with 21 gold. Host nation France and our Aussies are next tied with 13 gold. To other news now, and mortgage holders have been spared further pain with the Reserve Bank today leaving interest rates on hold. But the global economy is on a knife's edge with fears the US could fall into recession. In the wake of a financial meltdown, Michelle Bullock is refusing to waver. The cash rate left on hold today, the governor pouring cold water on talk of rate cuts. Based on what I know today and what the board knows today, what we can say is that a near-term reduction in the cash rate doesn't align with the board's current thinking. Inflation is still too high at 3.8%, but the Reserve Bank is now cautiously forecasting it to touch the top of the target by the end of this year. Not enough to declare victory. So I did consider a, a rate rise at this meeting, but there is still some considerable uncertainty about the outlook. Economists say the RBA is being cautious. Several expect rate cuts within six months. Some worry by then it might be too late. The problem is that central banks often raise rates too far, leave them too high for too long, and then lo and behold, yes, we get the inflation down, but we also go into recession, and that is a risk this time around as well. And that's the concern globally. Share markets are in turmoil this week amid concerns the US is heading for recession. Japan is rebounding from its worst collapse since 1987. Wall Street, European markets, commodities, crypto, the lot have been caught in furious selling. It's getting ugly real fast out there. Sometimes you have to panic. Sometimes the theatre is on fire. Australia's benchmark ASX 200 index has lost close to $100 billion in just a few short trading days. No further selling today, but nerves are shot. 
that was really aggressive selling. It continued selling all the way through to the close. Pretty much as the, the, the most or the most aggressive I've seen since the global financial crisis. To be honest with you, I think it's 50-50 for the US right now. So in many ways, we are a bit like the US, but maybe three or six months behind. So I think the risk of recession here is also significant. The central bank left balancing the financial lives of millions of Australians. Chris Kohler, NBN News. Still ahead in NBN News tonight, the heartbreaking tribute from the wife of a hunter doctor killed by a crocodile in North Queensland. A new surge in the cold case disappearance of a mid-north coast teenager. And the SES scrambles after flooding cuts roads in Tamworth. <laughs> Two burgers, small fries and drink for six ninety five. Smart. <laughs> and drink for six ninety five. Smart. Hmm. Aspire for more from your home. With Clarendon's Aspire range, there's never been a better time to buy an affordable, personalised home. Go big on savings and style. With four bedroom homes starting from as little as $275,000. And for a limited time, enjoy $50,000 off all home designs. See how your personal touches can come to life at our eight display homes in the Hunter. Love coming home. Clarendon.com.au Newcastle, get ready. The global smash hit musical Mary Poppins is on its way. Playing at Civic Theatre, but only for three weeks from October 5. Look at MaryPoppinsNewcastle.com.au why this range means there's a whole lot more for your home. It means we have a tool for every job. And a nut for every month. A barbie for every backyard. And a colour for every mood. Overcoat chicken and rice dry dog food, only $64.99. Ryobi wet dry workshop vacuum, $119. Energizer Max Plus AA batteries, just $19.99. Where you find a competitor's lower price on the same stocked item, will beat it by 10%. Buddy's Warehouse. Lowest prices are just the beginning. The wife of a hunter man killed by a crocodile in North Queensland has revealed one of his last acts was to save her life. Dave Hogburn was on holiday with his family when the tragic accident happened. On the trip of a lifetime, Dave Hogbin, his wife Jane and their three young boys. Pictured here in far north Queensland, one of their last photos together. According to Dave's family, the 40-year-old was walking along the bank of the Annan River near Cooktown on Saturday afternoon when the ground gave way. He slipped 15 metres into the water, his wife Jane climbing down the bank to try and pull him to safety before he was taken by a crocodile. In a statement, Jane said, He saved me. His last act was to not pull me in with him. I'm glad I'm still here because it could have been a million-fold worse for everyone involved, not just the boys. 
A 4.9 metre crocodile was shot by rangers in a creek four kilometres away. Human remains were found in its stomach. Earlier on, there had been crocodile activity in the water. Dave and his wife, who live in Newcastle, were both doctors at the Jules Medical Centre and had worked across the Lake Macquarie region. It's absolutely tragic, tragic news for, for everyone, the community's family, it's awful, awful. A GoFundMe page has been set up to support the family. Wife Jane saying, I want to put a face to this tragedy. Someone didn't just get killed by a crocodile. We've lost a wonderful husband, father, son, brother, friend and doctor. James Wilson, NBN News. Police dogs and ground penetrating radar have been used during a fresh search for teenager Rose Howell, who disappeared more than 20 years ago. She was last seen walking towards her home at Bundagen, south of Coffs Harbour, in April 2003. Officers today making a new appeal for information. A police dog hard at work at a Repton property. <laughs> Searching for anything that could shed light on the disappearance of 18-year-old Rose Howell. The operation in June, only revealed today, also included specialist forensic officers from New South Wales and Federal Police using ground-penetrating radar. The search was um, conducted as a result of direct information received as, as a result of this reinvestigation um, to someone who may have had access to the property and there's no links to all those uh, the property owners to any involvement in Rose's disappearance. Miss Howell was last seen at about 6.15 p.m. on April 11, 2003, walking along Perry's Road towards her home at Bundagen, about 25 kilometres south of Coffs Harbour. She was reported missing two days later after failing to meet up with her mother. When she hadn't rang up by the afternoon, I started to get a bit concerned, and then the next, the, by the next day I was really concerned, so I went into Bellingen and look for her and didn't find her and then I went to the police. Last month, police examined a Ford Falcon believed to be connected to the teen's disappearance. The analysis of um, anything that was actually located um, is still ongoing and I'm not going to go into detail for operational reasons. A 2012 inquest found that Miss Howell had likely died but the date, place and cause could not be determined. So I really want um, Rosie to walk around the corner and come home. Maybe she's not going to. Police say all information is considered by investigators and that just one tip could be the missing piece of the puzzle. We'll do other searches if need be. Rose's family have been uh, navigating their life in a sea of uncertainty for the last two decades. And we would, well, our hope is that we can provide the answers to you. Britt Ramsey, MBN News. A man's been given an 18-month community correction order for lighting a bushfire in the Hunter last October. 21-year-old Jack Drayton must also complete 50 hours of community service. The blaze threatened dozens of homes at Kersley and Pellomain, closed roads and prompted emergency warnings. Heavy rain caused flash flooding in the northwest this morning with this dramatic rescue unfolding in Tamworth at around 5 o'clock. A man in his 20s was stranded on the roof of his car after it was swamped by fast moving water on Wollongong Road. SES volunteers and specialist water teams arrived using a boat to get him to safety. Two deaths in three days on the same stretch of road near Maitland have prompted urgent calls for a safety upgrade. Tonight, a truck driver and a pregnant woman are still recovering in hospital after the latest incident. Cessnock Road at Cliftley lit up red and blue as more than a dozen emergency services attend another fatal crash. This time, a man in a four-wheel drive lost his life after a head-on collision with a truck carrying scrap metal. His passenger, a pregnant woman in her 30s, survived the impact, as did the 34-year-old truck driver. Police are still investigating the cause of yesterday afternoon's tragedy, while on Friday, 44-year-old Jason Kildee died in a collision on the same road. This is, or well, should not be, acceptable to the community. Cessnock Road only reopened just before midnight and is notorious among locals. According to the latest government data, between 2018 and 2022, 14 crashes occurred, leaving three people dead and 18 others injured. If you're hopping in a car or on a, on a motorcycle, to comply with the rules, 
make sure you get there safely. Main and Cessnock roads connect two of the fastest growing regions in the state and are surrounded by new housing developments. Locals now worry the road is only going to get busier and more dangerous. Cessnock's mayor today vowing to keep pressuring the state government. Council will always advocate for improvements to road safety, whether it's around intersection upgrades, uh, access onto to the main road. Regional Roads Minister and Maitland MP Jenny Aitchison says a full assessment of Cessnock Road will be undertaken. After every incident, uh, Transport looks at what were the findings of the crash and what you know, might be possible to do in terms of road conditions. We will continue to look at that. Bruce Rotama, NBN News. Expert advice used by the Minter government during negotiations to extend the life of a Raring power station has been tabled in Parliament. The coal-fired plant was due to close in 2025, but in May, the government signed a two-year extension deal with Origin Energy. The advice provided to the government suggested that power prices would go up if the station closed in 2025 and that delaying that would not impact investment in renewables, but would increase emissions. One of Port Stephen's longest serving councillors, Bruce McKenzie, has ruled out putting his name on the ballot paper in September's local government elections. The great-grandfather resigned in 2017 after a 42-year stint that included being mayor. He's instead thrown his weight behind independent candidate Paul Lamott. It's at the heart of the Hunters Athletics community, putting the likes of Rose Davies, Jessica Hull and Genevieve Van Rensburg on a path to the Paris Games. But now there are calls for a track overhaul at Fernley Dawes Athletic Centre. It's named in Christy Dawes' honour, but the Paralympic medalist is now unable to train on the Newcastle Centre's unique track surface. Instead, she and Paris-bound Luke Bailey opt for a tarred lane on the side. I act like the blue is lava, so I try and stay away from the blue because it's just become so slow and um, it gets a lot of little bits and pieces in it that can cause punctures to our tyres. It's getting worse. Like, we used to do at least three sessions a week on it. Loved to death since the last major fix in 2017 and too porous to cope with rain, it marks the spot for Al McCloskey's daily patch repairs to keep runners who still use the track safe. We're talking tissue paper thing in some areas and it just rips apart the air spikes and spinners go over it. And there were more of them training from the grassroots level up. Participation has tripled in the past four years. Competition, however, has been moved to Maitland. Volunteers have raised $100,000 for a revamp, preferably a Mondo surface. They say a further 700000 is needed. Well, we'd really like to see Newcastle City Council make a significant contribution here to the track because it is a council asset that we're managing. Newcastle Council told NBN News it provided information to Newcastle Athletics about grants earlier this year and will continue to work with it on future opportunities. Stakeholders say an upgrade should be budgeted for. The development of these athletes starting at a young age at this track um, and with the consideration of Brisbane 32, um, it, it's imperative that the track gets resurfaced. Sierra Williano, Indian News. The overnight rain band pushed through clearing this morning, making way for what turned into a glorious winter's afternoon, warming nicely up to 17 to 19 degrees across the central coast and Greater Hunter. Next, it's not a case of if, but when, America bolsters Israel's defences before a reprisal attack by Iran. Protesters storm the home of Bangladesh's Prime Minister after she flees the country. And a chapter of history closes, the death of the last rat of Tabuk. <laughs> including all Manchester home decor, fabric, sewing, craft, party, curtains and blinds. Yes, that's 30% off store-wide. Sale on now, open till 8pm. It's Spotlight, it's what you make it. <coughs> Rocket Hill is better on a better mobile network. 
Well, did you did you guys plan that, or is that just like real crime? Keep moving. Where's the dog? Realestate.com.au. Best sheds up to 40% cheaper. Triple garage is 8,600. Four car garage 7,250. 15% off sale is on right now at Best Sheds. Call Best Sheds on 1800 151780. Uber is better on a better mobile network. <laughs> Introducing Prime 100's new slow cooked range. Healthy, single protein diets, slow cooked for flavour. Simple to store and serve, it's convenient for you and irresistible for them. After all, they deserve the best. Prime 100 SPD Slow Cooked. Available now. Police investigating an attempted armed robbery in the Hunter are seeking this man seen in CCTV. A 64-year-old was threatened by a male wielding a knife at Waterworks Road at Rutherford at around 11.30 last night, but the would-be thief left empty-handed. I believe he's the same man that is responsible for at least four other offences in that particular area. Those incidents on the same road happened between July 22 and last Friday. Anyone with information should contact Crime Stoppers. Fears of a wider war in the Middle East continue to grow with an attack by Iran believed to be imminent. The United States is moving more troops into the region amid a vow of retaliation. Iran has promised punishment against Israel. Tonight, it's America bracing for a potential multi-day attack. We are concerned about the, the risk of the conflict escalating and the conflict spreading. The president convening his top national security team in the Situation Room and in the Middle East, the central command boss with boots on the ground amid a bolstering of air defences around Israel, America sending in reinforcements. We will defend Israel. Escalation is in no one's interest. The Israel Defence Force today claiming responsibility for a strike which has killed another Hezbollah commander in Lebanon. The targeted attack coming less than a week after the assassination of Hamas political leader Ismail Haniyeh in Tehran and a Hezbollah military leader in Beirut. <laughs> Tonight it's not if, but when will Iran launch its response. It might lead to another response that will gradually drag us into a full-scale regional uh, war. In the United States, Lauren Tamazi, NBN News. Celebrations have descended into chaos and violence in Bangladesh after the resignation of the country's Prime Minister. The end of Sheikh Hasina's 15 years in power came after weeks of unrest and sparked looting and fires at her residence. A house party in Bangladesh as a country in uprising took over the Prime Minister's residency in Dhaka. Protesters in their thousands making themselves at home. In the kitchen and in Sheikh Hasina's bed. Hasina, known as the Iron Lady, had ruled the country for the past 15 years 
but there were concerns she was slipping away from her democratic roots with hundreds of activists killed by police. What began as a student protest against government job quotas last month reached boiling point yesterday. The army chief giving a televised address. The Honourable Prime Minister has resigned, he announced. Now we will form an interim government and continue our work to lead the country. That news sparking mass celebrations in the nation's capital. And even here. This was Lakemba in Sydney's West last night. After fleeing the country, the 76-year-old is tonight believed to be seeking safe haven in India. James Wilson, NBN News. Australia has updated its travel advice for the UK, urging citizens to exercise a high degree of caution as riots continue to break out. Prime Minister Keir Starmer has committed a standing army of specialist police officers to tackle the unrest, with almost 400 people arrested so far. We've lost the final link to a defining moment in Australian history. Tom Pritchard, the last rat of Tobruk, has died just short of his 103rd birthday. Born in Victoria, he was underage when he enlisted in 1940. He was an ambulance attendant during the eight-month-long siege of Tobruk in World War II, where 14,000 Australians held the Libyan port against the Nazis. The finance and investors spent the day counting the cost of the worst session in four years. More from Chris Kohler. It was a breather for the market today after yesterday's brutal sell-off. The ASX clawing back 31 of the almost 300 points lost during Monday's global market crunch. Fund managers said they knew shares were looking expensive and the index was due for a bad day. The question for investors now is, are the stocks worth buying yet? Crowd favourites like Commonwealth Bank and West Farmers were picked up, while gold stocks were sold off. Japan's Nikkei rebounded 10% from yesterday's hammering, and Wall Street futures are looking a bit stronger too. The Aussie dollar also rallied, buying 65 US cents, 59 euro cents, and regaining $1.10 New Zealand. The nights don't get any bigger than this in the sports department. Adam Murray joins us again. Just keeps coming, doesn't it? A very proud moment for Rose Davies in Paris. Good evening, guys. She etched her name in the history books. The Novocastrian put up a strong fight in her first Olympic final. Next, all the highlights from a big day for our regional athletes. Plus, we're live to Paris as the Boomers prepare for their quarterfinal and a silver end to a superstar's golden comeback. Cheaper. Farm sheds 11,990. 
industrial buildings, only 18,600. 15% off sale is on right now at Best Sheds. All Best Sheds on 1800 15, Thanks to Light and Easy, managing your weight and enjoying a healthier life has never been easier. The flexibility of Light and Easy is good because it works for everyone. Junk Start Pro really worked for me. You don't have to count calories, it's all there and you see results straight away. Hands and Locker Bar stock a large range of Yeti products. From coffee mugs, beer coasters and also the new Yeti luggage range. Hands and Locker Bar have got it all. Yeti at Hands and Locker Bar. Save a massive 30% off store-wide, including all Manchester home decor, fabric, sewing, craft, party, curtains and blinds. Yes, that's 30% off store-wide. Sale on now, open till 8pm. It's Spotlight, it's what you make it. 24 hours after clinching her second Olympic silver medal, Nicola Olaslagas has got her hands on her prize. The Central Coast high jumper finally rewarded on another big day for our athletes in Paris. Nicola Olaslager's moment to soak it all in at Stade de France. A collection of Australian flags all over the stadium, so in a way it feels like home is right here tonight. Not just flags for the Aussies, but signs too. Friends of Newcastle's Rose Davies made themselves heard as she lined up for her first Olympic 5,000 metre final. The 24-year-old finished 12th in a stacked field, a huge improvement on her debut in Tokyo. I'm really happy. Like, like I said in the heats, my goal was just to make the final, and I did that, and I wanted to give it everything I could, and I think I did that, so I can walk away proud of myself, and I'm happy. The national record holder also becoming the first Aussie female to run a sub-15-minute time at the Olympics. Her goal was to make the Olympic final, and look how well she's done. Fresh from setting a personal best, Australia's fastest woman, Tori Lewis, took to the track in the 200-metre repertoire. charge. Lewis is starting up beautifully down on the inside. The Novocastrian showing experience beyond her 19 years. Tori's done it. She's won her first Olympic race. Round to the semifinals! Woo! After a short turnaround, the Newcastle junior then bettered her earlier time, finishing seventh. Those girls are going so fast, I was just trying to stick, stick on with them and try to let them pull me through to a good time. The Sharks had a slip up in their final pool match against Japan. Despite leading 5-2 after the first period, the game fell away in the final 11 seconds. And they've stuck it in! But the 14-13 loss won't sink their quarterfinal hopes. It gives us a lot of belief that no matter what situation we face, kind of, you know, the start of the game went into a fourth quarter in the quarterfinal, that we're ready and prepared for it. They'll line up against the USA on Thursday. The Hockey Roos Olympic campaign came to a devastating end in their quarterfinal against China. Willow Tree's Alice Arnett opened the scoring. What a tournament Alice Arnett is having, the Olympic debutante. But China fired back quickly and kept them coming. Grafton's Grace Young led a late charge from the corner. Bobbling ball! Australia pegs one back. But that wasn't enough. The hockey roos down 3-2 and heading home without a medal. Montana Claire, NBN News. Tonight, there's Wu and Cole in the 10-metre platform final, while sailor Matt Wern only needs to finish higher than 7th in the dinghy race to claim gold and defend his title from Tokyo. Ruby True and Arissa True are skating for glory in the women's park, and our men's track cycling sprint team is hoping to qualify for the final. More sport after the break, including the latest on the injury to Jacob Saifidi, will he return this season? And a new honour for two rugby league super coaches. It's game time. Everyone back to mine! Whatever Earl throws at you, life's good with LG at Harvey Norman. Large capacity fridges that feed the entire team. King size washing machines that can tackle the toughest stains. TVs available for the slower party. Or for those early morning kickoffs. Conquer life's little hurdles with Harvey Norman, the home of LG. Harvey Norman, Australia's home retailer. At Kmart, we've dropped our famously low prices across hundreds of items store-wide. So it's easier to get the products your family needs at low prices you love. And they're here to stay. Kmart, low prices for life. A help company would offer you cover even if you forgot to lock your front door. Catherine. 
we're doing. <laughs> and I remain shorts. I help company. of labelled the calf injury Jacob Saifidi suffered last weekend as significant and they're unsure if he'll return this season. Brody Jones has been named as his replacement for Sunday's home game against the Tigers. It was the huge blow in the warm-up no one saw coming. He's still on the crutches so it'll be a week-to-week -week proposition. It's it's fairly significant uh, injury. Jacob Saifidi joins Brabham Best and Anari Tawala in racing the clock to return before the end of the regular season with 10 crucial competition points up for grabs. We need to win this week. There's no issue with that. Phoenix Crossland has retained the number seven jersey for Sunday's clash with the Tigers, meaning Jackson Hastings' way back into the side could be at lock after playing there in reserve grade last weekend. Given it some thought, uh, obviously when he was at the Tigers, his numbers looked quite good when he played there at 13. Uh, it's just another chance to uh, get him in the team and uh, it's not something that he shied away from either, which is a good sign. Maitland's Tom Cairn featured in that game too, scoring a try before having to suit up again for first grade after Safidi was ruled out. Not since I was probably about 12 year old, I reckon backed up and played uh, gala days and stuff, but not really at this level, no. That's good club man, no, that's gone and played some time in carpet and there's so many weeks where they don't get on, you can get caught in that and he didn't, he came out and contributed really well. Newcastle's NRLW side takes on the Dragons after the men's game. The Knights two from two in their quest for a three-peat. I think we've got um, a lot to improve on attack-wise. We, um, we can definitely, um, there's a lot more points in this, I think. Coach Ben Jeffries has named an unchanged side. Despite being out of finals contention, the Eels say there's still plenty to play for in Friday's derby against Penrith. This is the last time I'm going to play with all these players in one team, so I've um, got to give it a red-hot crack, and especially not just for us, our fans and our families as well. Meanwhile, Wayne Bennett and Jack Gibson will make history by becoming the first coaches inducted into the NRL Hall of Fame. The race for a top two finish in Group 21 could come down to Sunday's clash between Denman and Greta. The Colts can lock in a major semi-berth by beating the third-place Devils. Both sides head into the clash in form. Denman is coming off a strong win over Singleton last weekend, while Greta beat Aberdeen. Scone remains undefeated, but only just after edging out Musselbrook. 
Saturday looms as one of the biggest days in the history of Hunter basketball, with not one but two NBL one sides competing in grand finals. Maitland's men are no stranger to the big stage, but it'll be the first ever decider for the Newcastle's women. After soaring on their home court... Brennan for three. There's yes. another. The Falcons are lighting it up from outside the yard. The Falcons women have landed in a maiden NBL One East decider. The crowd goes wild. The Falcons head to the championship game. Yeah, I'm really proud. I mean, I can't, words can't explain. It's surreal, but the job's not finished, obviously. The Newcastle side has timed its run to perfection, handing over its first loss of the season before backing that up against Manly last weekend. I think we brought that confidence into the Manly game. And I think if we bring that confidence in our defence, especially into the Sutherland game, then we'll be unstoppable. Standing between the Falcons and NBA One history, the Sutherland Sharks fronted by a former Opal. Got the win up there, but yeah, they obviously have Lauren Nicholson now, so um, definitely going to be a different game. Maitland will join the Falcons in Penrith on Saturday with the Mustangs men looking to overcome two years of grand final heartbreak. It's just a matter of just finishing the job. We're putting a lot of work to get here. And uh, we owe it to ourselves, owe it to the fans. Everybody's been showing up all year to get this done for everybody. Awaiting them, the Canberra Gunners, who they lost to in the 2022 decider. It's one versus two. You wouldn't rather have it, like, have it happen any other way. We want to beat them. And just to know that we beat everybody in the conference and uh, solidify this great season that we've already had. Jack Howard, MBN News. As Hunter athletes do the region proud in Paris, the next generation is already putting in the hard yards back home and aspiring Olympians at Newcastle Grammar School are getting some extra help from a jet stalwart. Balancing schoolwork with competing at an elite level is something Ben Kantorowski knows all about. After signing with the Jets in year 11, he went on to make almost 200 A-League appearances. It's been a great pleasure to have uh, represented Newcastle. Um, hopefully I did that well, but um, now I can help pass on some of that knowledge to some key students here at Newcastle Grammar. The 32-year-old new role, Head of Athlete Development, means he works with pupils to ensure their grades don't suffer on the way to sporting stardom. They also provide me with a nutritionist and psychologist, which helps my sporting performance. Inspired by Newcastle's two-time Olympian Rose Davies, 16-year-old Annabelle Miller competes in cross-country as well as the 3,000 and 1,500-metre track events and is eyeing national titles in all three. She's a massive inspiration. She's a lovely person. I see her at the track and it's awesome to see her train. While surfer Ocean Lancaster wants to represent Australia in the Brisbane Games in 2032. And for the 15-year-old, the work starts now. There's a few few steps i got to go through to get there, a few qualifications i got to get and um, yeah, let's hope I, hope I see myself there. Sophie Scanlon, NBN News. And that's just two rising stars. They're on their way. <laughs> Thanks, Adam. All right, thank you so much, Adam. Up next, stay with us. Weather details on the way. Morning. Try this at home.
you keep moving. Where's the dog? Realestate.com.au You could get up to $4,000 cash back when you switch your home loan to IMB Bank. Get a great low rate with no application fee, no monthly or annual fee. All the time it takes to whip up a stir fry. IMB Bank, right by you. Are you thinking alfresco and looking for something simple? Call HB Aluminium. Looking for something special? Call HB Aluminium. Looking for something stylish? Call HB Aluminium. Or looking for something stunning? Call HV Aluminium and find whatever you're looking for. Uno Prize Pick is on at Hungry Jacks! Uno, With over $175 million in prizes! Pick economy for two! We're going to Bali! You mean, I'm going? Or business class for one! Uno Prize Pick, now at Hungry Jacks! The whole company will get people back on their feet. Make complicated stuff simple. And I even try to predict the unpredictable. So that's what we're doing. And I remain in short. Well, the rain band pushed through overnight, making way for a gorgeous winter's day right across the region. Most of the rain fell inland, 30 to 50 millimetres. Throughout the Upper Hunter, we had 30 millimetres, but most locations recorded tops around the mid-teens. But a lot of it fell over the one catchment throughout the Peel Valley around Tamworth. And the ground has actually been quite saturated. They've had very consistent rain for most of the year, and all of that was just too much to handle handle and that's why we saw the flooding unfold there throughout the Peel River. That system moving offshore, it's generally fine and clear now in behind it thanks to another large high. A front closing in on the southwest and it's actually really mild throughout this part of the country and that's why we've got some very comfortable temperatures on our hands here at the moment. Generally throughout the southeast, mid to high teens on the way but up around the border it was 25 degrees at Cool and Gatta today so very very warm. 25 tomorrow at the Alice. Uh, for Perth uh, nice and warm ahead of that next system coming through. Showers there will return today. Well, it just sparkled in the afternoon, didn't it? And temperatures, as expected, climbed. And we hit those expected tops of 18, 19 degrees today around the lake. Calm overnight, quite clear. So it's going to be a cool start. But again, quite comfortable again throughout tomorrow. Light winds with us. So overall, shaping up nicely. It's another great looking winter's day served up again. Again, temperatures likely to climb into the high teens and we may see some 20s emerge throughout the suburban areas. So looking very nice. But again, of course, you'll have that chilly beginning. Not bad, though. We'll just get through the, the mid-morning section and then by lunchtime, it's going to be glorious. Make plans for an outdoor lunch tomorrow during your break with the high teens expected after that chilly beginning for the hunter. Swell at about a metre. Not much there at the moment. It's really quiet along the coast. Sun to rise at about 20 to 7, down 5.20. Tomorrow morning, working to the high tide and getting there just after 10, almost quarter past 10 tomorrow. A mere metre of swell out of the southeast. Looking fantastic for the next couple of days and to start the weekend. Next week, though, the wet weather returning to the coast, mostly the north coast, a little bit just clipping us there. You can see Sunday potentially into Monday, but not much of it is going to have an impact across the Hunter. Generally, it's a, a fine run as we move through these early stages of August. Generally fine for the Central Coast, but also likely to catch a couple of showers early next week. But let's just focus on the days ahead, looking very nice. Even some beach weather in it. Surf, though, well, that hasn't really showed up. It is uh, really small at the moment. Uh, of course, there's a little bit of runoff out there, so a little bit murky in the water but that's going to clear nicely and it's going to become very very nice across our coast in the coming days if you uh, get a chance for a bit of a lunchtime stroll early morning or evening it will be worth it thank you gav and that is nbn news good night, good night.